Welcome to the Yakcast. Hey, Iowa. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. Man, it's a low tide. I know, man. I don't ever, I don't often get to walk literally on the coast. No, that's really cool. Alaska Riverfront area. It's very historic here, for sure. We can see the Memorial Bridge, beautiful St. John's River. Yeah. Well, thanks for meeting with me down here. Yeah. I'm excited because tomorrow. That that's right. We definitely we, we missed our yak cast on Wednesday. I forget why. I think it was cold. Yeah, uh, that what it was. There's a bunch of problems. I think we had a we had an interviewee, but we'll we'll go down and we'll figure oh, out. Oh, that's right. We were gonna. And it was too far and timing. It was yeah. a beautiful mural, which we will get to at another time. And it's a mural in a city other than Palatka. A little bit farther south, about an hour south of here. Yeah. But it's about the St. John's River. A really good buddy of mine named John Dane. That so is. he wants to launch his website. He'd like to have the Yak Cast on his website too. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So he's like, I'm going to get a website ready for the next time. So we'll get back to that one, of course. Cool. But what, what, tomorrow, were you, what were you doing when I I'm out? getting prepared for the river blessing. So um, those are called prayer ties, which is often a native, a lot of native people will, will tie prayer ties to set their mind kind of in a, uh, in a, a place to connect with that ceremony they're about to run or they're about to do or be a part of. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like mantras in a way, um, in a, in a very, very true string way. Okay. But there's a, many levels to it, but, um, and often that, that's, in the, that sounds very Buddhist. Like I've seen that in, yeah, in Eastern cultures, but yeah, this is a native American. I have to tell you, the more I study different religions and look into them, the more similarities I find, the less differences, the differences that I find mm -hmm. are all in the human made rules, you know, within them. But, the more that you find, the more you look into it, there's that there's that underlying truth, and they end up all saying very similar things, if not identically the same things. So yeah, yeah like uh, rosary beads, you know, or uh, malas, or they're very similar to prayer ties in a way. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's getting that mind to calm down and connect with that inner peace and that spirit that connects to all things, you know. Well, yeah, a flower is still a flower, whether it has five petals or uh, right. hundred petals. But our perception of a flower <laughs> can change depending on who's looking at it and for what. So that's the beauty but of it. Your, yours aren't flowers. Those are roses and roses are best. <laughs> right. Okay. I will fight for my roses until I die because your hibiscus is stupid. <laughs> is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. This is a crazy thing to fight over flowers and colors and meanings of them. How right? could you tell me your orchid is the same as my rose? <laughs> That's How true. dare you? They are the same. They, they breathe. Fear. They they grow from the earth. They love the sun. They face the sun. I mean, it's yeah. it's a beautiful thing. So if it, if it's a, a truth, you know, something that that you can do. So tomorrow's a big day because it's the I thought it was the 16th and I promoted it as the 16th annual river blessing. Uh -huh. But this started in 2008. So if you count 2008 up until 2024, yeah. it's the 17th, I believe, if oh, okay. my math is correct. Oh, wow. It's the 17th River Blessing. And we've been doing this for a long time, like I said. And um, it started with a native elder named Basil Braveheart who came here and said, why aren't y'all blessing your river? Mm -hmm. And so he did the first River Blessing and we've continued it when I worked for the Parks and Rec Service in St. John's County over yeah. at Alpine Groves. But uh, they don't wanna do it anymore in St. John's County, at least the Parks and Rec Department does it. So, We've come to city of Palaka, the riverfront, and they didn't open their arms to us and said, yeah, bring it here. So we're going to have three river keepers, the St. John's, which is, we're on the St. John's right now. We have the Matanzas river keeper. We have the St. Mary's river keeper, which is up north of, north of Jacksonville, mm. bit, right on the border of Georgia and, and, and Florida. So exciting. They're going to bring their bowls of water. They're going to pass them around. There's going to be a heartbeat drum. And then we're going to pour the St. John's river water back into the St. John's. So, it's a cool thing because it's about connecting on a higher level, um, meaning their love and appreciation for the river, not the politics and the issues of the river. And that's the difference. Right. Because, you know, there's a ton of stuff that you can do here at Riverfront uh, in Palatka. You know, we've been talking about a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, just walking. <laughs> well. And in the least, you know, if you're driving by, stop and, and go for a little walk. You can see all sorts of little treasures well the cool thing is the sun actually like comes up right in front of the oh, riverfront yeah. park so you could be anywhere from the bridge to the marina and see the sunrise mm -hmm. it's beautiful i've been out here many times watching the sunrise i, I see the light reflecting yeah on your on I'm your getting face. blinded by the sun right now so I guess, yeah we're about mid-morning we're about mid-morning so the sun's right there and it's reflecting up in my face yep yeah. but 
uh, I actually run some kayak trips down here where we go around the bay and we talk about the old sawmill, the native people that lived here, and then William Bartram cut around this corner because mm -hmm. in Palatka in the river, it has this nice little S bend right, right here. And, and he wrote about seeing native people playing and yeah. porn and all kinds of chiki huts that were right here behind me. Yeah. Which is, you know, and a few hundred years ago. There, Bartram sign number four is here. Yep. Which is the, the Bartram Trail has, is it 34 signs? Sure. 37, 34, Something 37. Like Bartram Trail Society. Bartram Trail. Um, um, but, you know, they've got, they've got the River Center here. We've got the Memorial Bridge, which has a walkway that goes out under so you can get closer to the bats that live under there. Yeah, we I've, noticed there's bats I, there. I've noticed most of them are a little further away than the walking trail. So being out in a kayak. So I've been told different things. Like, they're on this side and they're on that side. I think, they, they're, I think they're on both sides. Right. But if kids and people are playing on the walkway, if I lived, if I was a bat that lived right there, I'd probably like go down a little ways move, move to a different neighborhood. I've looked under there. They must be in one of the tight little crevices that uh, they disappear up in there. But apparently at that sunset during springtime, I would assume would be the best time because I haven't seen them. They'll come and fly out. But my plan is to check them out. Yeah, I've seen it. I've, I've been yeah. wa walking on the bridge at sunset and yeah. all these bats were coming out. That's really awesome. And, and I turned around to look on the other side to see where they were coming from and they weren't. I was like, oh, they're, on, they're coming out from the bridge. That's awesome. Yeah, so I definitely want to get some warm weather we definitely gone. want to have bats they're not the the mythology is that they carry a bunch of rabies and stuff no but they're insectivores they stop disease they, they stop, stop disease. zika right. they stop malaria that's right we want bats around we do. We Ooh, what do. was that big i don't know splash. might have been a river otter because they're definitely up and around this time of year i wonder if it's the otter from last week hmm. he, maybe he got the memo He's following us <laughs> maybe so but it definitely was big enough to be an otter so i didn't We've been seeing bubbles all along the side of this, so that's that's a very possibility. They might be digging for, you know, different types of food food yeah. items that are in this area. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, you know, there's so much that they're doing here, um, and there's so much that could be done here. So I know yeah. they do bike tours. I know down in Palatka, there's a bunch of murals about the history and the flora and fauna mm -hmm. and all over town. And they were doing, I don't know if they are right now, but they have been doing mural tours where you can just walk around and see all the murals and have somebody talk about it. Yeah, I met Linda Kreider. Yep. Uh, she's actually going to be on a Yak Cast coming up pretty soon. Cool. She said she would love to do yeah. walking tours and mural tours. She lives not that far from here and she said that she's going to get in her kayak and try to make it over for the river bus. Oh, that's cool. She's going to come by kayak, nice. which is really cool. So Very that's cool. down this way and she's going to come up to this area. So. Pretty nice. And, and then the main street is, you can feel a, it has a pulse. It's it's not on life support, but it's it's definitely struggling. It's <laughs> but yeah. there's a there's a lot of empty space. I think people are trying to figure out what's what's right for the the town and the community. We we're so just when talking. You come here. There's there's a few really great businesses <clears throat> to to visit: restaurants, bars, stores. Well, there's that uh, brewery, Azalea's Brewery. Oh yeah, Azalea. brand new brewery. It's been around for a few years now, but um, they they the the owner used to uh, run the St. John's River Alliance, which used to yeah. support the river keepers. Yeah. And so they Andr have this Andrea. Andrea. They have this beautiful mural on inside their uh, brewery uh -huh. with the St. John's River in it. Oh, that's so cool. So it's it's actually pretty amazing. So she's very supportive of yeah. this area. She bought yeah. me pie once. Did she? Because I was working with Renee Samba. Okay. Um, doing the landscaping when nice. they were redoing the old coca-cola factory it's now the azalea brewing company that's right so i actually got to plant a lot of those azaleas and I can't wait trees, to trees it. around it that they the brewery is a pretty small little area with an open um in the middle and, and they have a big courtyard but yeah. next door they own and it connects to the old coca-cola factory they do and it's huge and the upstairs <laughs> in the stage there was a stage and it was the movie house for colored people Interesting. There was nowhere for them to go to the movies to. And that's where they did it there. I didn't yeah. know that And history. the movie history in Palaka, it's probably like the most significant contribution to the movie going experience is here in Palaka. I learned this at the Smithsonian uh, Museum in hmm. Washington, D.C. But Palaka is ground zero for the first ever pup horn sold at a movie theater. Wow. But it started here. That's actually it all pretty started cool. here. It's cool little history. Yeah. But they're planning on redoing that whole stage area upstairs and possibly having bands and, bands and things and like that and events up there. Yeah. But they have to 
you know, go through regulations. They have an elevator they got to repair and a few other things. But yeah. hopefully that's in the near it, future. It'll grow organically as, as they get more support, you know, and they know they can invest more and in doing more of the building. Yeah. It was well, about 10 years ago that this town had a bunch of abandoned buildings downtown. Yeah. But now there's all, a bunch of new restaurants, some good restaurants, actually. Very good. There's a nice hotel right here at the riverfront. I mean, yeah. It's, it's growing. It is the place to kind of. Wow. Kind of keep your eye on. I, I like going to Magnolia. Yeah, that's I, a good I've, restaurant. I've only had breakfast at Magnolia. Yeah, I but they do they do brunch and they and they do dinner. Yeah. But that's a farm to table. A lot of the vegetables they actually you know have a veggie omelet on there. That's called the county line omelet. Oh, you know, so they're the they're going line. out and getting produce from local farmers that's awesome. you know, as much as they can. It's farm to table. There's even yeah. a personal gym downtown right now. There, there, What's there, the name? there is. It's the refinery. The refinery gym. Yeah, I was in t in town for about six weeks staying here, and I was looking for somewhere to do yoga. And there's not a single yoga studio in Palaka. There's a couple of commercial gyms, um, and there was one place downtown called the refinery that looked like it was the most likely to have yoga. And I walked in there and met some great um, longtime residents in this area. Uh, Teddy, yep, and his wife Dina. I actually met Dina, and um, they don't do yoga. They used to before the lockdown. They did some group fitness in there. Um, like every now and then, a Andrea has yoga teachers at the uh, brewery. The, the, the brewery, and there's a couple other places I can see. There's a, a pop up, but there were no yoga studios. But I went in there. I met Teddy, and I have such social anxiety in going to gyms, right? Like large fitness centers. Um, it's definitely not that vibe in there, though. Yeah, what's the what's the word that the Zoomers use to talk about something? I, I used to say tragic. Like, that's, it's just like tragic when you go in there. Oh, cringe. Oh. Like, we, I go into, like, big gyms and, like, people are there just, like, flaunting their things and doing their stuff. I just get this, like, cringe feeling. And when I walked into their little studio, I was like, oh, wow. this is my space. This is, like, private, one-on-one. -on -one. It's not a lot of people. And if they are people that are in there, they're not there to, like, try to hook up or anything. I just... They're there to work out. They're there to refine their body. Yeah. 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 I walked in there and Teddy's yeah. awesome. So we should talk to him sometime. Yeah. yeah. Maybe get him down to come to Riverfront Park and talk to him about doing some stuff down I mean, here. I, I'd love to start a regular Tuesday morning workout. I've got that <laughs> on my calendar. I think there's the people here that you could possibly do that. Right yeah. here. Right here. You know? Yeah. This, this high rise, this little area right behind this would be perfect. I'd be just standing out here with my kayak. If you don't mind uh, navigating <laughs> the dog poop. Unfortunately, oh, well, <laughs> not as bad as being in Rio de Janeiro. I was I was there in 2012, and I would get up before sunrise to go for a walk, and they don't have public restrooms in Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro, but they it doesn't stop people from using the bathroom in the of streets. Course. Like I was sense. I was walking, and you know, here in the states, we worry about dog poop on the ground. At least we don't have to worry too much about people. Yeah, that's true. But I'm that glad, is that, that's a that's, problem. That's a problem down here. Because, there isn't a lot of bathrooms right here. Well, actually. there are bathrooms, but they keep them locked. Yeah. There, there's the marina store with bathrooms, but they're locked. I've, I've been in there once randomly. I was like, I've tried it a dozen times and it's locked. And the River Center is only open such small hours. So if somebody's here paddling 11. in the morning, there's there's no restrooms. The Hampton Inn, I think, would be my go-to. Angel Diners as well, right down the street. The oldest diner in Florida. Yeah. They have bathrooms that are out back, and normally they're pretty, they're open and allow people to use them. Yeah. But well, we actually talked to the marina um, just a little bit ago, yeah. and hopefully we can get an interview at some point about the so. Noah's Ark, is the oh, name okay. of it. Yeah. Which is a beautiful, um, uh, what is that? My brain. Well, it's, it's definitely rustic, ancient. Yeah. <laughs> it's really old boat. Apart. Um, but it's dry rod. It looks like it's dry rod. It's just been sitting there for so long. Yeah, it's got a it's got a wooden hull. But it, it was a nice ferry du boat. double decker ferry. Yeah, yeah for sure. But that once that gets on the water, man, that's going to be awesome. And if we can get the Oklahoma to open up, we could reenact and restart the ecotourism that was originally in Palatka, which is from Palatka and from ah, Green Cove Springs, it was all huge. the way up to Silver Springs. Everybody had to go to Africa, and then all of a sudden, here's Florida. Yep. Like all these, you know, middle class and upper middle class affluent people coming down to Jacksonville for spying. Which is know, called Calford. Calford. And then, you know, you'd stay getting your your nails done and your spa on, eating your Kellogg's. 
cornflakes back in the day, right? Sanatoriums. Yeah. And, but then, you know, the, the guys, whoever wanted to go hunting, would get on a steamboat and come down to Palaka. And Palaka was the epicenter, not only of shipping and commerce and logistics, but of, of ecotourism. And you would, they would get on boats like that. There's a few other Head ferry boats that they have as well that they were talking about getting in the ferry boats, going up the river a little ways, taking kayaks off the ferry boats and doing some kayak tours. And yeah. so I'm interested in that. I know you are. They've got taxi boats. I just that's learned what, they got taxi boats. That's and what I'm they're, talking about. They're trying to take people out there, but I'm like, how, how do you get there? How, how, how do you make a booking? Think, Where is the website? You think we should do a, a yacht cast with uh, the owner of that? I think they should pay us. <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> no, it'd be I, awesome though to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be awesome though to get to put that on the map. And they said that they're looking to do it somewhere in the near future. So, no, they're, 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 it's, it's looking like they're doing it. They're yeah. trying. They're just yeah. like like all of us. We've got so many great ideas and want to do so many things. It's the community. It's come, really about together. the community coming out and wanting to experience these things. Yeah. And then I talk to the community, and they say. Well, we just don't hear about it. Just this morning, I was sitting out there at the amphitheater, get, you know, just thinking about tomorrow and what, what we're going to actually do and everything. And a gentleman walked by who lives locally, walking his dog, and he said, yeah, he goes, the city doesn't tell us what's happening out here. We find out about it when it's happening. We drive over the bridge and we say, oh, there's something happening. And that's when we find out about it. So that's something that we, we need to look at in the future about getting yeah. change so people can actually in the area know about what's happening out here. Well, getting the information out there, I mean, they do, the city does have a calendar on their website, yeah. but it takes somebody being proactive, you know. I mean, I put stuff out there. Yeah. There's so much, there's so much noise. How, how do we, how do we find out about it? Right. Because, but regardless, uh, this is here and it's open. It's free to walk around and check out. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful place to launch a boat. There was a sailboat that pulled up this morning. I'm not sure what they're doing, but it looks like they have a, a little tour or something going on on a sailboat. Oh yeah. And and with two dozen empty storefronts, like old Walgreens and, you know, I don't know what half of these stores were. I mean, I've got a dozen business ideas to put in, in there. I'm, I'm not gonna be able to do any of them. So if anybody is a capital person who lacks imagination and ideas, I mean, I've got dozens, I'll just give them to you. Cause, cause I, I wanna see an invasive species restaurant. That's interesting. Tell want, me about I, that. You were talking about this last night. Well, the only reason something's classified as invasive is cause there's nothing in the ecosystem that- Well, because it was brought weeds here. Weeds it out. And it's, and it's, and it's taken, taken over. over yeah. As to why it's classified as invasive. Right. But, but your idea was interesting. That's raw material, that's food. Just, and it's not a lot of invasive food. species are edible. Yeah, mussels. I mean, zebra mussels. We can use them to clean our water and then make all sorts of things. And certain food, types of fish, king, dragonfish, uh, placosimus. I think placosimus would make good fish stock. Okay. I don't know about actually eating it, but it'd make good fish stock. But pike, we said pythons. There's a ton of plants what about that you can eat. Frogs and iguanas. No, iguanas. I know they. Eels. Yeah. We don't have a lot of iguanas up here. By the zoo, I think they do. But. We, we can get them from South Florida. Yeah, there you go. But what in, what invasive species locally would you find to be the tastiest? Me personally, I haven't eaten any of them, but I mean, there's probably a lot. I've never tried python. I've always wanted to try python. Yeah. You know, they're not necessarily right here, but they're not that far from here. And that's easy to, when they catch them, they could bring them up here. Yeah. It'd be cool to see an invasive species restaurant. What was the name? What's the name you would call it? Oh, that'll be a, a committee decision. A committee decision? Okay. Yeah, I, right now, I'm trying to think of what we're going to call iguana rather than iguana, because nobody will, will want to <clears throat> eat it if we call it iguana. That's true. Lizard snakes. That lizard snakes doesn't sound good either. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we we, oh, wow, we do this all the time, though. Like we, There's thousands of ideas that come up between our conversations, but oh, this me. is actually a beautiful um, potential of of what's of what's to come in the future and if we do it right it can serve the local community and might, it can serve it might, the might natural be a customer area. should we get them on the phone i don't know why not geotrip and adventures <laughs> i bet you this is going to be some spam we get a lot of spam speaking to oh yeah yep spam you guys if you are getting these calls to i we just how do we stop it? How do we stop all these spam calls? How many times do I need to be told that my Google listing is not up to date? 
or on Facebook, you have um, you've done inappropriate things when you haven't done inappropriate things. Oh. You're going to be knocked off. That's oh, the news. I got one of those ones. Yeah, don't don't open it. Don't answer it. Just there are some good it. ones. Never click anything. Yeah. My mom sent out a link to something the other day in a text to everybody in her contact book, basically, and it was just a link. And I said I called her. I'm like, Mom, were you hacked? Like, why did you send just the link? Like, you should have at least said, hi, this is your mom. I'm not spam. Because if you click a link in an email, even if it's like an Amazon or a yep. bill or you give them access loans, to your stuff. anything, yeah. they tell you, you got a problem, click here to fix it. Oh, yeah, don't do it. Trouble. Yeah. Not just for you, but for everybody in your context. That's too. right. That's right. And your bank. QR codes. How long can we trust QR codes? Yeah, now that they're, they're out there, people can embed links to viruses and that. That's true. That's yeah. the, we need to get our QR code fix while we while we can, because pretty soon people won't, won't trust them. This IT world has gone super crazy. That's why I like the natural world. It makes more sense to me. Yeah. So, you know, the dangers are very clear. As long as you follow the rules, then the yeah. dangers aren't a problem. And, you know, if you go outside when it's raining without a rain jacket, you get wet. I mean, it's yeah. clear, you know, it's very clear. Yeah, so. yeah for sure. Yeah, yesterday morning I woke up and wasn't quite sure what to do with my feet. You know, one of those days where there's so much to do and like the anxiety started flowing and started thinking about deadlines that were looming and bioluminescence seasons coming to an end. I'm still getting bookings with no public access. You know, those thoughts were on my, my mind. Well, what do I do? I go for a walk on the beach. Yeah. And after an no hour on the, on the beach, I had come to resolutions. I had come to decisions. I had cleared, cleared my mind. Like I didn't have the energy just to sit and meditate and mm -hmm. get through it if, as long as I can walk. And if I'm surrounded by nature. Here's an old practice that I was taught by elders a long time ago. Go tell it to a tree. Yeah. And it's interesting to think about that. Go tell it to a tree. What does that mean? It's like, we now know through science that trees are conscious beings, you know, they yeah. actually do interact with us humans. They do. Um, whether we can hear it or not, or experience it or not, um, yeah. is about your perception. Yeah. I can smell certain trees when I'm around them. Sure. That's definitely communication. There's yeah. data being collected. Yeah. Go tell it to a tree is partly just getting it off your mind and telling it to another being, which the native people saw trees as conscious. Sure. Without the science, they knew. Right. But sitting with a tree, putting your back up against the tree, uh -huh. there is an inner energy exchange. And I always feel better sure. whenever I sit with a tree and just lean against it and consider what's going on. You yeah. Know? I've often wondered how much the tree played a part in Siddhartha's enlightenment. Like, had he sat somewhere else, would he not have been able to tap into the the energy that took him to where he went to have the realizations that, that he had? The... I know William Bartram definitely got inspired by the nature oh, yeah. in this area. Yeah, I'm seeing I'm seeing more and more of those heads pop, pop popping up behind you. I bet you there are river otters out here. I saw one over here and one over here. So they're probably looking for mussels and things in this area. It's interesting. This morning, also, there was a huge raft of um, oh, the, ducks. ducks. There's there actually a smaller, smaller raft just over here, but they were just it was so calm this morning. There's no wind, and like the ducks were just hanging out, and just chilling together. But now even like one or two, the wind is starting to pick up a little bit. So good time to go sailing. That's for sure. This is also where the mug race is. I think they're up to 60 something mug races. Yeah. It's the longest intercoastal sailboat race in the United States. Is that around the time of the Blue Crab Festival? It is in May. May? Yeah. I can't yeah. remember this, if it's the is... first weekend or the last weekend of May. It might be the first weekend of May. People come from all over. All over. And they start here and they go all the way up to uh, uh, Jacksonville by the Butman Bridge is where they end. Okay. So it's it's a it's a full day of, of uh of sailing and they have different classes of course you have the smaller yeah. boats up to the larger boats but nothing over what is it 35 36 feet in mass height because of the bridge in uh green coast springs bridge shans yeah. bridge which they're now rebuilding to hire they're going to build it higher yeah. which was an old uh, old environmentalist ploy to stop uh big industry down up the up the river but they say down south but up yeah. the river on the St. John's River. And it worked. I mean, there's not a lot of huge industry down here. We well, got to watch it. We, we, we don't want that to happen when it does get high. Yeah. I mean, we still lost all of our living shoreline. I mean, in so many areas, the river used to be, you know, narrow channels with giant islands of vegetation. 
with trees growing out of it. Yeah. So you, you, in this area now, it's wide open, but back when William Bartram was here, it was, it was probably a series of channels. I, sure. I, I imagine like Puzzle Lake down sure. down near uh, Lake Monroe. In certain bog areas like the Okefenokee, you can find still bogs where it's floating mats of vegetation where you can actually walk on it very gently, but you can actually walk on it. That's how we got to restore here. the river then, to get some, get some floating wetlands. That's a trend all over in urban areas. I saw them in DC, they're using them in Chicago. Any Anywhere that you want to protect your shoreline from boats, you just float some plants. That's a good idea. Make, make rafts and you let the roots hang down. Like if you've got a retention, like retention pond in your community that you can't keep any fish because there's nowhere for them to live. It's just a big open thing of water. You've got to float plants in there. Yeah. You got to give give a little habitat. Did you stop would, spraying? Would you would you want to sit out in the sun all day long? No, you die too. So if you want your pond to be healthy, you need fish and you need vegetation. If you're not going to let the vegetation grow around the edge because you're neurotic and prefer to have your property erode away, you know, because you don't like to have the living shoreline, the alternative is well, keep your clean shoreline, but let's put some pretty mess floating gardens in our water, and do that. your local pond would love it. Stop spraying is what the biggest thing. Allow the plants to grow. Don't kill the, the foliage around the outside edge. You don't need green grass going to the edge of the water. You don't. And you know, once once everyone wakes up to the use of phthalates in our fertilizers and our pesticides and the reality that it's making humans infertile. Like look at the sperm count of people that live in rural America. How we're good with the sperm and, count. Or, yeah, man, because it, it that's it's killing us. Yeah. All all of this and we're spraying it in our yards and letting our children run and play in it. Yeah, I don't know the science behind it, so I couldn't speak intelligently about that. Yes, phthalates, when a fetus is exposed to phthalates in the mother's system, which come from fertilizers and manufactured goods and, and a lot of things that we put on our skin and smell, anything that's anti-slip, anything that is uh, fire retardant, like so, so it's, it's everywhere. And for the most part, it, it washes through, but if you are exposed to phthalates in the first trimester, the chemicals make it very hard for males to come in because it affects the hormones that are released. So it can it can stop males from being men. That's interesting. And sperm counts are going down since the 60s. Researchers have been following it. And if, if the sperm count continues at the rate that it is, um, by 2050, we're expecting most American males to be infertile. That's wild. But it's very easily stoppable. You just, if you, live somewhere where they're spraying uh, agricultural sprays. Don't be there on your first trimester. Go 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 somewhere else for the first trimester. A avoid anything that smells good, feels good, How about we tastes good. Using? <laughs> well, we'd have to find a substitute because it's used in every major manufacturing process that we have. Our phthalates. The, the forever chemicals, PFAS, um, BPA. We took BPA. BPA is one of the 11 of the 1,300 possible things I'm talking about that were banned in the United States. Only 11, 11 of them were. Uh, and BPA was making male, adult males infertile. So when we were drinking our, wa our water bottles with BPA in it, we took that out because it was causing infertility problems in humans like fat. A lot of the other ones, it's much more innocuous. But anything that in disrupts the endocrine system, which is responsible for the communication of all of our hormones throughout our system. So if you're having any sort of like chronic um, ad adrenal, thyroid, brain, respiratory, anywhere that hormones are required for you to be healthy, if you're having a problem with that system, we have to look at what the you know chemicals that we're exposed to on a regular basis, what role are they having. And they're in our water. That's why alligator penises are shrinking in Florida because of all the phthalates in the water. So a lot of, you know, heavy metals and phthalates, industrial, but they say industrial waste. Save the alligator penises. It's very important. Yeah, we should save it. <laughs> <laughs> a, a ranger at the GTM told me that the alligators in the Guana Lake, when they get to seven, eight feet, and they've had a year or two to, to reproduce there, they relocate them for a number of reasons. And one of them included bringing them to areas where the genetic pool of alligators has basically devolved away from having penises. Right. So you bring, bring some fresh penis to the ladies of Central Florida every now and then. All right, I think uh, penis has been said way <laughs> too many times in its jackets, but it is interesting information and it is a it is an issue. It, it is. is so. 
and you there's know, so many issues that we could cover though with the, with the waters of Florida, and we do need to start watching and start looking at how to clean it up. And I think some of the ideas about bringing plant life and then stop polluting would be the best one. But you know, that would be that would be an awesome thing. Shrimp, all this beautiful shrimp habitat. If you bring back all these grasses and stuff that the shrimp love, it cleans up all the pollution as it comes off the land. It helps clean up the water, make it clear. Actually, and it produces. Run, man. This, these docks are filled with people. All these docks are filled. With oh my God! All the people that come down for fishing, but then that feeds the birds and, yeah. and the, the other fish that, that we have. Not that you should eat fish out of the St. Johns River on a regular basis. You need to check the Fish and Wildlife Commission report on species and your specific location because there are many areas of Florida where they recommend eating zero fish, yeah. maybe one fish meal a week from the St. Johns River is safe. Um, you are better off eating the shrimp because they're gonna be less concentrated in the toxins. Right. It's the right. bigger fish that you have to worry about. But it's heavy metals is the main reason that we don't want it. So people that- Lower on the food chains with it, so. Yeah, people that eat regular St. John's River fish, unfortunately, you have very high mercury and other heavy metal levels in your body. Well, it sounds like the sounds of the water because of the wind is starting to get loud. And we're starting to get uh, generators up here with they're starting to do some- Oh, they might do that. Yeah, yeah so. I, I, I started up. getting off on my tangents. Today. It's all good. It's all right. We got to shut it down because you know we don't want to think about the bad stuff. We do want to. We do want to think about the bad stuff at times, but we also want to experience some of the beauty that's still here. Yeah. And so, if we experience the beauty that that is here, we know why we want to protect it. And I think that's a that's a key point. Yeah. So. Yeah. Thanks for meeting me out here, though. I'm, I'm glad we got it. We'll get it up so people can, can see it. Yeah, it'd be can, great. This is episode number eight. So uh, thanks for making it this far. If you did, you must know us and like us and feel sorry for us that we're out here, <laughs> small business people, competitors. We both wanted to do podcasts. Well, coalition now, but we never did our podcast like like this until we got together. That's so right. We got to thank Mac for yeah for. Unfortunately, he couldn't be with us today. Yes, he was he was taking care of his health. Yep. <laughs> you, inside joke there but I won't say that because I think I already said that word a few too many times right. but anyway come down here and check out the statue of the Doughboy that they have the, the, the Veterans Memorial Park Remember your Park favorite it statue is, it is it, well it's commemorating the, the hard work of the servicemen that, that served in this that served that came from this area and the very fine specimens that they are <laughs> that's right All well right. thanks again we'll see you another time bye